This project is a typical rigid body dynamic setup. Two glasses with candy sticks will fall down and break into pieces. You will, you will learn how to import objects, fill objects with real flow nodes, create initial states, use the fracture tool, and establish multi-joints between the fragments. For the simulation, we need two candy glasses. You can model them inside your 3D application and export them to RealFlow's SD format. There, the objects can be loaded with the import command. As you can see, the glasses are completely empty. And the next step is to fill them with candy sticks, as you have seen in the preview. For this purpose, a standard RealFlow capsule is, led, is added from the objects menu and then resized with the scale menu. In this case, the values are 0.4 0.5 and 0.4. Please keep in mind that here the height axis is the y axis. Depending on your real flow preferences, it is possible that you have to use the z axis instead. In this case, the coordinates are 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 .4, and 0.5. The capsule is now roughly placed inside the glass. To get an idea about the relations between the capsule and the glass, the glass's shading mode is set to wireframe. When the proportions look good, select the capsule node again and open the array tool from the real flow menu. This helper is used to create a large amount of identical objects and arrange them in a matrix. In this scene, we need a huge pile of capsules. These objects will be attracted by gravity and fall into the glass. To create such a pile, we enter two for the horizontal axis, in this case x and z. This will create a total of four objects. From the height axis, we enter 150. This will create a total of four times 150 equals 600 capsules. You can see the result in the array tools window as well. The items distance parameter determines the space between the individual nodes. Here, values of 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.4 are used. With these settings, RealFlow creates a so-called multibody. A multibody can contain thousands of objects grouped under one node. The difference to a group is that you cannot access the individual objects, but multibodies are processed much faster than individual bodies. The same steps are repeated for the sec second candy class, but here a few more objects will be created. Now the multibodies can be moved to their final position. To make them distinguishable, the multibody should be renamed. Right click on a node and choose rename the original capsule object can be deleted. To make the objects interact with each other, their rigid body attributes have to be activated. With the Shift key, it is possible to select more than one object. The advantage is that we can now change parameters for both objects simultaneously. The multibodies should be movable, of course, and therefore the active rigid body option is used. The candy glasses, on the other hand, should remain at their original position. This can be done with passive rigid body. Last but not least, a gravity demon is added. Now we already have a complete setup and are ready to fill the glasses. Hit simulate and start. Since we have several hundred of objects, it might take some time to finish the simulation. Once you are happy with the object state, you can abort the simulation process. What we need now is a method to preserve the current state, and this could be achieved with a few clicks. 
Select both candy objects, change Use Initial State to Yes, and click on Make Initial State. To finally make use of it, it is necessary to activate the Restate to Initial State option. When you reset the scene, the state of the appropriate frame will be used for further simulations. The current state is the starting point for the next part of the simulation where we have to move the glasses and the capsules to their initial positions. Since multibodies and glasses have different centers of rotation, it is not possible to select and rotate them. The result of such a transformation is that the objects are displaced and that's why we have to find another method. To get the objects to their initial positions, we will use a combination of animation and simulation. Reset the scene and select the first glass. Right-click on the position parameter and create keys for the three values. Now do the same for the node's rotation values. When the values turn orange, you have successfully created animation keys. Move the timeline slider to frame 75 and create new keys to record the change of position. When you scrub the timeline, you can see the first glass moving. The workflow for the second glass is exactly the same, but here we start a little later to avoid collisions between the objects and nodes. The second glass should be located below the first one. Now it is time to simulate. Go back to frame 0 and click on simulate. The idea behind the animation is that the animated glass nodes will move their content to the desired position. When the objects have reached this position, we recommend you simulate a few more frames until the candy sticks have settled. What we have now is the state of the final simulations to start from, and therefore it is necessary to create new initial states for the candy stick multibodies. In the next step, we will break the glasses into pieces with RealFlow's Fracture tool. To keep the positions of glasses, all animations have to be removed. Again, right-click on the scale parameter and choose Delete Curve. Repeat this action for the rotation parameter. RealFlow keeps the last position and now it is safe to reset the scene. Do not forget to save your scene from time to time. Select the first glass node and open the Fracture tool from the icon bar. As you can see, there are just a few settings. The most important parameter is a rough number of pieces, and here we enter 400. The seed number is used to change the distribution of the fragments, but here it can remain untouched. After the fragmentation process, it is necessary to set the new multibody's dynamics parameter to active rigid body. For the second object, we have to repeat the entire workflow, but we use a different value for the number of pieces. The original glass nodes can be deleted because they are not needed anymore.
If we were simulating right now, the fragments would immediately start to fall apart. To change this, add a multi-joint node from the objects menu. The setup of multi-joints is pretty easy. Click on Objects A and select the first fragmented multi-body from the list and do the same for Objects B. Currently, all pieces are glued together and cannot break. To enable this feature, a breaking force has to be defined. Now we have to change force max mode to constant limit. Then a force must be added. This is the most difficult part and to be honest, it is not always easy to find working values and it requires some tests as well as experience. A good workflow is to start with very high settings for max force and decrease them during your tests until you can see the desired behavior. When we consider the mass of the candy sticks and the fragments, it is clear that we need a much higher value. If the forces are too high, the object will not break and the joints act as if they were in unlimited force mode. With very low forces, the joints will break apart too early. For the first simulation, we use a max force value of 1 million. Enable break if distance is exceeded. For the distance, a value of 0.002 is used. Finally, we want the fragments to collide once they are broken. To do this, go to the collision panel and change enable if break to yes. Click on create recreate to establish the connections. Of course, these steps will have to be repeated for the second candy glass. Before we can start, we have to add one last node. A simple cube will act as a ground object. A size of 75 times 75 units should be enough to catch all the fragments flying around. Please do not forget to activate passive rigid body as well. You can also apply colors to make everything visually more interesting. A very popular application with rigid bodies are slow motion simulations. There are basically two ways to achieve this effect. The simulation retime tool and a higher FPS rate. The first method is really versatile and you can create stunning effects with variable frame rates. The second approach on the other hand is very easy to apply. Reset the scene and open the simulation options panel. There you can find the FPS output parameter. The idea is to calculate more frames per second while playback speed is normal. To get a simulation four times slower than normal, simply multiply the default value by four. For PAL, that is 100 frames. For NTSC, it is 120 frames per second. The warning about the substeps could be ignored with rigid bodies. At the beginning of the simulation, all joints are green and intact. This is a visual control because when the joints break, they turn red. In the statistics panel, you can monitor the currently used forces. One problem is that the forces are not static. When we increase them, we will also see higher values in the statistics panel. The first test simulation shows a value of 1 million is not high enough. The fragments are highly accelerated and the entire scene looks chaotic. If we really want to see a difference, we need a much higher force. It will take a few simulations until you have found the working settings. For this scene, a value of 2.75 million gives a very nice result because the objects are not completely shattered, but only partially broken. There are cracks and fragments that still stick together. Once the simulation has been finished, it is possible to create a preview. Just open the playback menu and choose Create Preview. In the movie play, change FPS to 25 or 33 according to your TV system and click on Play again.